President Trump wants to establish a sixth branch of the military, a space force. Roll tape. Our destiny beyond the Earth is not only a matter of national identity, but a matter of national security. So important for our military, so important, and people don't talk about it. When it comes to defending America, it is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. Joining us now is perhaps the best known physics professor in all the land. His name is Michio Kaku, and he's our guest this morning. Michio, welcome to the show. Glad to be on. Look, there are obviously pros and cons of a space force. Why don't we break it down and start with the pros? Yes, well, the Space Force idea cuts both ways. I mean, let's not be naive. The Chinese, the Russians, they have secret space war plans. The Chinese, 10 years ago, blew up one of their own satellites to prove that they have killer satellite technology. And in March, Vladimir Putin announced a new weapon, the hypersonic drive weapon, which we don't have, but they boasted that they have. So you're saying we've got to catch up? So on the, on the pro side, we're talking about a new Pax Americana that is in outer space. Let's make America great in space. And we would be the cop on the block to make sure that there's no petty disputes and that, that commerce and technology flows freely in outer space. Is that That's how, the pro side. But is that how the president sees it? We are the good cop in space. According to President Trump, as far as I can see, we are the good guys. We're the John Wayne. We set the rules to make sure that, uh, that criminals and thieves and terrorists don't get access to outer space. And the space lanes are kept open for commerce. Okay, we haven't even talked about cost, but let's not. The pros are there and you put them out for us. How about the cons, the reasons not to do this? Well, you know, even a small nation like North Korea, in principle, could detonate a hydrogen warhead over Kansas and wipe out almost all our satellites. We are the most vulnerable to satellite warfare. The electromagnetic pulse would wipe out not just the satellites, but knock out our power systems. We would be thrown back by the electromagnetic pulse maybe 200 years into the past. So why not form a space force to stop that kind of thing happening? Because the enemy can also secretly field one too. There could be a space race. A space race to perfect the first electromagnetic pulse weapon. And it's like the great equalizer, the Colt 45. A small nation with an atomic bomb, one atomic bomb, could in principle paralyze a great nation because we have no defenses against the electromagnetic pulse. So that's, what, that's the, the opposing argument, all about the electromagnetic pulse. Doesn't seem like a powerful argument to me. Well, it does mean that even the small nations have a great equalizer. They can cause chaos in outer space. And remember, we are the most vulnerable to space war. Not the Chinese, not the Russians. We have the most GPS systems. We have the most telecommunications, the Internet. Uh, commerce oh, takes place in outer space. So if you explode a small nuclear weapon, an electromagnetic pulse knocks out our GPS, knocks out our phones, and that affects us more than other countries. That's right. In a gunfight, it's like throwing sand in the enemy's eyes. Even though you have all the firepower and all the gunslingers, you have sand in your eyes. You're blind. You can't see what's happening. And even a small nation can do that. But longer term, it's not just about the immediate Earth's atmosphere. It's surely about a space force, which is literally a space force that launches forth into the great unknown and controls other planets as well. I mean, am I dreaming here? Well, let's take a look at what's happening on the ground. The Chinese have announced that they, too, want to put the, their flag on the moon. And so we could have a traffic jam around the moon with different <laughs> nations competing for territory. And we may need a new outer space treaty of 1967. That treaty banned nuclear weapons in outer space, but it had a loophole. And that loophole was that non-nuclear weapons are allowed in outer space. That is, for example, a barrel of nails detonated in outer space could wipe out hundreds of communication satellites. Even a barrel of nails can create enough shrapnel to paralyze their communication systems, mm. which are not reinforced. Make the judgment. You would form a space force. I would look at the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, close the loopholes. <laughs> okay. It's cheaper, cheaper than creating a whole new bureaucracy. 
And then we can look at the table and see what the Chinese are doing and what the Russians are doing. Michio Kaku, don't be such a stranger. Come on back whenever you're allowed to come back, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so we appreciate it. Thank you. All right.